In the individual combined exercises, Daniela Silivas from Romania. In front of a capacity crowd, the 17-year-old European champion from the city of Deva tied on three of the four apparatuses. Excelling on the beam, on the metal bars and the floor exercises, and conceding gold only in the vault to Svetlana Boginskaya. The GDRs of Dagmar Kasten took silver on the asymmetrical bars. Both Kasten and Silvers got a 10 each, the highest mark in the sport. And so the medals had to be awarded according to the marks achieved on the asymmetrical bars in the individual combined on Friday. The results of all the gymnastics events in Seoul have shown that the USSR remains the dominant country in the sport. In the eight days of competition, the Soviet team won altogether 11 gold, 5 silvers and 3 bronzes, while the Romanians took 3 gold, 3 silvers and 3 bronze medals. As for the GDR gymnasts, they secured only 1 gold via Holger Behrendt on the rings, as well as 3 silver and 4 bronze medals. But much in our first Olympic report today. We'll be having more news and reports from so in the course of the day. was Olympic report from Radio Berlin International, the voice of the German Democratic Republic. of our programs, one question was, how many practical parties are there in the GDR? And listeners could choose between one, three, or five. Just for interest's sake, how would you have answered this question? In fact, most listeners knew or guessed the right answer. There have been five political parties in the GDR, indeed, for more than 40 years now. The party with the by far biggest membership, 2.3 million people, is the Socialist Unity Party. The activities of this party attract the attention of both friends and foes. For friends, it points out the direction and ways for a decent life, without social worries and fear of the future, without the fear of losing one's job or being unable to afford medical treatment and medicine. Foes are giving it attention because they consider the party a thorn in their flesh, since it says clearly and unequivocally what is in the interest of the people, working people and all people, while exposing at the same time what is bad for the people, namely armament and war and hatred and hostility towards other people. 
The party's programs and set hopes, its assessments and decisions are not kept secret, but can be read by anyone. About one in every four working people are candidate members of the Socialist Unity Party. About 40% of them work directly in production, in the building industry, in steelworks, coal mines, and so on. In short, wherever the wealth of our society is produced. The party members are known as such not only in their work teams, but also in their neighborhood. As members of the leading party, they are asked for views and answers concerning a variety of questions and problems. Their attitude and achievements are in the focus of attention. The party's aims and the activities of those implementing them need openness. This is shown especially clearly nowadays when party elections are beginning at grassroots level. As from the 12th of September, the group leaderships have been reporting on their work during the past 18 or so months, and the new leading bodies are elected. One aspect of the openness was that the opinions of members of other parties or non-party members on past achievements are sought and everyone in return is informed about the course and outcome of the election meeting. The media have been dealing with this subject. The captured Berliner Zeitung, for instance, has been devoting a full page to the party elections in the capital almost every day, and the situation is similar in other GDR regions. At the center, here as in other parts of the country, is the effort by thousands for tackling our task soberly, critically, and with confidence, with the aim, first and foremost, of further increasing the GDR's economic potential. This is only logical because economic performances are the basis for our policy and the well-being of the people. We can thus considerable achievements, but we are aware that there is still much to be done. This discussion on the possibilities and needs in an open, critical and self-critical atmosphere, the often painful seeking and finding of new solutions to problems facing us, solutions for the benefit of the individual and society at large, this is of concern not only for the members of the Socialist Unity Party or the other four political parties, but affects the lives of all the almost 70 million people in this country. Hence the openness in the party elections which have now begun. when they finish with active sport. Today we have one of them at the microphone of Radio Berlin International European Service. We went to see the orthopedist and surgeon Dr. Karin butner jans in her room at the orthopedic clinic of the Charité, Berlin's University Hospital, where she works as a senior physician. She's 35 years old, married and has an 8-year-old son. She's 1.56 meters tall and weighs 47 kilograms. In other words, she's a slender woman, which seems to be a contradiction to the heavy work of an orthopedist and a surgeon. But as she told us, she has strength enough as in the past. The past means that she was once one of the world's top gymnasts, Olympic winner and world and European champion. During the 1972 Olympic Games, 
Karin Jans, as she was called before she got married, showed a sensational world novelty on the asymmetric bar, which has since been known as Jans Salto. Recently, she attracted once again attention with another novelty. As a member of a team at the Charité, she had a great share in the development of an artificial intervertebral disc. Dr. Karin Müttner Jans told us. Here. The artificial disc provides above all for the maintenance of the capability of moving. It also brings most of the patients a clear reduction in pain and even freedom from pains. We wanted to know what was behind her new success. Ich denke, dass das Engagement des Einzelnen eine wesentliche Voraussetzung für den Erfolg darstellt. I think the commitment of the individual is always an essential condition for success, whether in sport or in a profession. But personal commitment is multiplied in work teams. The artificial disc is an example of this. In short, it is described as SB Charité. S means Professor Schellnack, the deputy director of our clinic, and B means myself. This development has been achieved in joint work and in cooperation with partners in industry. We are working on a further development and hope that this will also be a success. Dr. Karin Bittner Jan said that a clear idea of aims, good timing and discipline were essential for the path towards success and went on. Viele Menschen in meinem Leben haben mir entscheidende Hilfe geleistet bei dem in addition, there were many people in my life who gave me decisive help. My parents, coaches and fellow athletes. During my studies, many lecturers lent me a helping hand. And here in the clinic, colleagues have had a decisive influence on my life and my development. Without this support, including the elaboration of a special study plan for me by my sports club in cooperation with Berlin Sumbold University, it would have been impossible for me to combine sport and studies. I'm so glad about this. For as late as after the completion of my sporting career in 1973, I was able to take fully part in the regular study. In 1983, I became an orthopedic specialist and started work at the orthopedic clinic here in the Charité, which has a rich tradition. I like it very much here. Dr. Karin Büttner Jans's special field are operations on hip joints. The question as to the cost of such an operation arises. Die Bürger unseres Landes, und das ist in unserer Gesetzgebung so verankert, bezahlen nicht. As is laid down by law, people in the GDR don't pay anything for their stay in hospital, for the operation and for the implant. I think it is a great joy for them that after the operation they can usually live without pain for many years. I'm glad that I don't need to ask them whether they have enough money to pay for the operation. Many patients express their gratitude for the work of Dr. Karin Büttner Jans, who is always on hand for them. But she also has a family. As we said, her son Aiko is just eight years old, and she's active in many fields of social life. She's active in the GDR's peace movement, and as a member of the National Peace Council, she's represented this country at two World Peace Congresses. We asked her how she combined the obligations in her profession with family and social work. Es kommt auf eine günstige Synthese an und es sicherlich wechsel. Well, I think it's necessary to find the right combination. All in all, priority is given to my profession, in which I find happiness and fulfillment. Of course, my son would like to go skating or swimming with me much more often. My husband also likes to spend an evening together with friends and or go to variety shows. Sometimes we find time to enjoy this together. The holidays provide the opportunity to catch up for a great deal. When I have completed my master doctor's degree, I certainly have more time for my family. But the Peace Council will always remain particularly important for me, because as a doctor and a mother, I know well that everyone is needed for this cause. There is no life, happiness and prosperity without peace, which is why I regard it as important to do everything possible for peace. Radio Berlin International European Service, and I hope you're nicely settled down for our last item.
As I said at the beginning, although the postal strike in Britain is now over, it is having effect upon the letters we're receiving. So this week, we have time to answer one of those questions which I was unable to take up when acknowledging a letter some time ago. For this purpose, I have Dave Kelly in the studio with me for a while. But first of all, to the few letters received, which may be of interest to all. To begin, Hugh Kernow of St. Austell in Cornwall, down in the southwest. He writes, I understand that you are all kept very busy in your work at the radio station. This is proven in the programmes. So many thanks for our time for writing. Once the bazaar will go off well, one knows of the sub support given by the people of the GDR for such events. The aid given to Nicaragua, etc., proves the thought for others. Then it's the training of students from many lands who come to the GDR. A very good idea also was the children's rally, where children from far away joined in the activities and also took home with them a bond of friendship, which is worth much more than gold. Unquote. Well, needless to say, the bazaar went off very well. Thanks to, I would like to stress, to those of our listeners who sent us gifts for this purpose. The English section wishes once again to thank all of you who helped us at our own special store. Another letter comes from Mr. Peter North of Stockport, Cheshire, further north. He seems to be a bit puzzled. She writes, in one of your broadcasts, you referred to heart disease prevention and the role of health insurance in achieving this. I would be grateful if you could explain the link, as I thought heart disease prevention was centered on items such as diet, exercise, smoking, and stress. I can't see the connection with insurance. Well, it's a pity you were unable to give the exact date when you heard this reference, and I may have been able to trace exactly what we said. But, that be as it may, the link, I believe, lies in the fact that given the GDR's health insurance system, which ensures free treatment for any ailment one has, and a system which provides the necessary preventative care, including campaigns to educate people on what is important to their health, all this together helps to fight the heart disease, just as other illnesses which every individual can ward off, by paying attention to the correct diet, enough exercise, not smoking and so on, as you yourself said. To help cover the cost of our health service, we pay 10% of our income monthly in insurance, 60 marks being the upper limit. This entitles us to any treatment free of charge. Of course, individual contributions don't cover the cost of the health service. The place of work pays the same as the employed person. Added to this comes about 50% of the cost of medical care covered from the national budget. So you see, there is a link because the facilities are also available to help people keep fit. Stephen Lum of Leicester in Central England says, Please send me one of the Special Olympic stamps mentioned in the program stamp album on the 30th of August. Unquote. Well, as I said last week, well, put your name on our list in the hope that we are able to obtain so far, they're not in our possession. Now to that question which we have to leave as an earlier. Mr. Albert Ford of Flystock, down in Bethlehem, wrote some time ago, I'm greatly interested in music, in particular rock, and the more non-commercial types. I would welcome any comments you may like to make on the music scene in the GDR. Like, what types of music are catered for on your internal radio stations? What sort of disco, clubs, etc. do you have? What seems to be the most popular variety of music among listeners? I mean, are tastes similar or different from England? It would be interesting for me to be able to make that comparison. Well, Dave Kelly has joined me in the studio as one well up on this subject, and I hope to be able to satisfy you, Mr Ford. So, Dave, what have you got to tell our listeners? Perhaps I could just begin by telling Albert that rock and pop music has a great help. It's something that features regularly on our programmes, sometimes on a Saturday in the form of sports or festival reports, and always on a Wednesday in my pop corner spot. On a Wednesday, I introduce PDR groups and play some of their music, and in doing so, I try to a whole range of popular music styles in the GDR. It's not just a question of my personal taste, or for that matter, what happens to be in the GDR charts. 
Now, that might be an interesting point, Dave, for Albert, because he says he'd be interested to hear some of the non-commercial pop music from the GDR. I think he identifies what is commercial with what is in the charts. Does that fit how things work here in the GDR? Well, as a matter of fact, it doesn't really. You see, the charts here are compiled by the National Radio Station, and they base their place on, on listeners' correspondence. The listeners are invited to write in with their requests, and those tracks in the greatest demand are placing. In other words, it's got nothing to do with record sales. In fact, I'm sure that a song that's not yet been released on the market features in the charts, and then, as you can imagine, it's very likely to go ahead and be produced on vinyl. Well, but Albert also asks just what kinds of music get played on the home stations here. Well, quite simply, all kinds of music. That's very specifically with rock and pop. There's a national radio station called DT64 which specialises in music and programs for young people, I'd say aimed at the age camp between 15 and 30, and that's on the air for 20 hours a day and plays a whole range of popular music from heavy metal to folk to jazz, disco, blues, you name it. And in the shops there are records reflecting these different tastes to uh, complete uh, the answer to the question that yeah. I'll put. Well, Dave, why don't we listen to some music now? I know you've brought something along with you. What have you got? Well, uh, I said that in Pop Corner I try to reflect the scene rather than my personal taste, and that's true, but of course, happily, the two sometimes coincide. And I'll make no secrets that the group I'm going to play now are amongst my favourite GDR bands. They started playing together earlier this year, and I think they've got real talent. And this is a song that is entitled Field to Bite, and it means your eyes are only too far away. Dave Kelly is in the studio with me today, hoping to get a question from Albert C. Ford of Finstock in England. Dave, where do people go to hear their pop music in the GDR? Well, earlier I mentioned reporting on festivals, and there are several of these annually, open air ones in summer and indoors in winter. For the rest of the time, concerts take place in a range of venues, some larger than others. I want to find out pop venues for Pakistan and Britain, for example. But I guess that the equivalent of it here is the uh, youth club scene. There are something like 10,000 of these youth clubs around the GDR, and they're generally the place where new young groups would make their first appearances. The clubs are very much the place where young people go in the evenings in the GDR to have a drink, have a dance, or to see a band. And what about discos? Well, discos take place in these clubs too, and there are also proper nightclubs. I mean, proper in the sense of being more impressively done out than the youth clubs, where you sit at a table and, for example, get waited on. Mm, well, thanks very much, Dave, for coming along. I'm sure that you've at least given Albert C. Ford of Plinstock some idea of the pop music scene here. I should recommend to him, too, that he tune in on Wednesdays in particular to hear Pop Corner, but I'd also add that on any other day he might well hear a bit of the pop music from the station. Let's hear a bit more now. What else have you brought with him? This is something very different from the dollars, but it's hot stuff from the different economy at the moment. It's the GDR Disco Queen and Pop Corner, and it's quite classical training has gone in for what she enjoys doing most. So we come to the end of our programme once again. Hopefully the listeners will begin falling in again this coming week. Goodbye for now. You've been listening to the European Service of Radio Berlin International, the voice of the German Democratic Republic. We brought out daily at the following times UTC. 0600 hours on 5.965 and 6.115 megahertz. 0845 on 6.115 megahertz 
10.45 on 6.115 megahertz. 1200 hours on 6.115 and 9.665 megahertz. 1400 hours on 6.115 megahertz. 14.45 on 9.730 megahertz. 16.45 on 7.295 and 9.730 megahertz. 18.50 on 7.260, 7.295. And 1.730 megahertz. 20.45 on 6.115 megahertz. And 1.359 kilohertz on the medium wave. And 22.45 on 5.965 megahertz. At 8.45 hours on Saturdays and Sundays only, you can also pick us up on 6.040, 7.185, and 9.730 megahertz. Please send your reception reports, comments, and questions to the English section, Radio Berlin International, Berlin 1160 German Democratic Republic الرسول الزيادة في اسمه معركها في تعوليات العربية 